this lion got stuck in a trap for years and was in a lot of pain. But three years later, something astonishing happened. Animals' lives are constantly placed at risk for ridiculous reasons, such as human desire for rare animal products. Poaching has led to the death and endangerment of several animals, but many of these stories don't make it to the internet. Well, one of these tragic occurrences certainly did, and it broke everyone's heart. This story took place in Makamo National Park in Tanzania. For years, poachers frequented this area, leaving many animals dead or badly injured. In 2009, as usual, some poachers set traps in the park, hoping to capture animals. Sadly, it was this illegal act that left a young lion in a state of misery for three years. Makamo Park is Tanzania's fourth-largest national park, blessed with a variety of animal species, including elephants, buffaloes, zebras, wildebeest, hyenas, leopards, and lions. These animals roam freely in the park in search of food. So, one sunny afternoon in 2009, a lion cub set out to hunt for food. He often went out with the rest of the pack, so despite being young, he knew how to hunt. When he reached the field area, he laid down in the tall grass and waited for an unsuspecting animal to pass by. Little did this cub know that he was hunting his last prey, at least for the next three years. After 20 minutes, the cub started to get impatient when he didn't spot any prey. Besides, the weather was becoming scorching, so the lion started to pant and desperately wanted to get under the shade. Over time, it seemed like he would return to his den on an empty stomach. But just as the lion was about to give up hope, he spotted an antelope. You see, lions are the second fastest wild cats, with a top running speed of 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers, though only for very short bursts. This can be highly exhausting, which is why lions have to be close to their prey before attacking. So, this young cub waited until the antelope was within close range. But when he charged, he missed his target, and the antelope began to run for his life. This young cub wasn't the type to give up, so he started chasing after the antelope. The chase went on for about two minutes until something devastating happened. The lion, blinded by his desire to feast on the antelope, didn't see a snare that was set by poachers. He ran straight into it. It was a creepy device with a metal catching ring and a bait in the middle. As soon as the lion poked his head into the trap, it instantly slammed shut. The cub tried to free himself from the trap, but he only ended up tightening the metal ring around his neck. As minutes passed by, the poor animal still kept trying to free himself, but all was to no avail. The antelope, who seemed to have forgotten that the lion was about to take him down, waited, perhaps out of pity, to see what would eventually happen to the young lion. But after waiting for about five minutes, the antelope left, leaving the poor cub to his terrible fate. The evening sky started to turn into molten brass, and daylight began to drain away. Soon enough, the moon became the only visible source of light, and it cast a sad gaze at the poor lion as he continued trying to free himself from the trap. Finally, at dawn, the cub successfully pulled himself from the trap, but the metal snare still remained around his neck. As soon as he was free, he didn't even try to move around. The cub, who was clearly exhausted and in pain, just lay on the grass. Sadly, this would be the beginning of a terrifying life that the lion would never have envisaged. After a while, the cub, who had regained some strength, got up and went in search of his pride. By then, the snare had already cut deep into his flesh, and he was bleeding profusely. When the injured cub found his pride, they could tell that he was badly hurt, and they sympathized with him. Sadly, all they could offer was their love, moral support, and care. Of course, none of them could remove the snare from his neck, as setting the lion free required human help. As time passed, the cub's condition worsened, and his wound became infected. With each passing day, the snare dug deeper into the cub's neck, making it hard for him to grow a mane, breathe, or eat. The poor animal was in a deplorable condition, and his wounds continued bleeding. Since the discomfort caused by the snare made it impossible for him to move freely, he couldn't hunt. So, how would the animal survive? Would he starve to death? 
Well, what you are about to see will leave you in tears. This cub probably could have starved to death, but his family members came to the rescue. Each day, they brought food to him, and they did this for three years. Whenever they went out to hunt, they always came back with the cub's share. What a beautiful display of love. Indeed, animals have so much more compassion than we sometimes give them credit for. Now that feeding was out of the way, what about the snare around the lion's neck? Would he ever be free from it? Keep watching because something unexpected will happen. After a few months, park rangers finally noticed the injured lion, and they began a rescue mission to remove the metal wire around his neck. Unfortunately, when they started tracking down the animal, they discovered that saving the cub was going to be difficult. For some reason best known to the suffering lion, he started hiding far away in the wilderness so the rangers couldn't locate him. Besides, he was protected by his kin, and they didn't let anyone come near him. A wildlife rescue team eventually intervened, and an operation to save the animal began. The team split up, and each group was assigned a different task. One group was to find, catch, and sedate the animal to remove the snare, while the other group had to chase away the lion's kin. All groups did their best, and within a few days. They had finally sedated the animal and cut away the electrical wire around his neck. It was just in the nick of time because if they had taken longer to save the cub, the snare would have suffocated him to death. A team of veterinarians treated the animal, and they set him free. This rescue ended three years of pain and suffering for the lion. Ever since the rescue, this cub would often go to the place where the rescuers removed the snare around his neck. Although he didn't get too close to the site, he would just stare at the spot for a few minutes and then walk away. The rangers believe it was the lion's way of expressing his gratitude to his rescuers. A few months later, the lion was spotted, and this time around, a lot had changed. The lion had gained considerable muscle mass and also an adorable mane. The lion now walks happily in the wild, and only the scar around his neck is a reminder of that bitter experience. But would this be the last lion to suffer at the hands of poachers? What do you think can be done to curb poaching activities? Sadly, ever since the decline of tigers, there is now a growing demand for lion claws and bones in parts of the Far East for use in traditional medicines. Researchers have shown that the population of lions is on a serious decline. There were an estimated 200,000 lions in Africa in the 60s, but this number has now dropped massively to just 23,000 to 25,000 individuals. Fortunately, there are projects such as the Sauna Project in Tanzania and other parts of Africa and the world at large that have been set up to protect national park areas against poaching activities. Hopefully, projects such as these will help protect and preserve wildlife for the future. What do you think about the story? How do you think poaching can be curbed? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. Also, if you found the story educational, then share it with your friends so they don't miss out on it. Give this video a thumbs up, and if you haven't, please turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on more stories. See you next time. Thank you. When a killer whale accidentally runs aground on the coast, it must be very scared and panicked inside. It kept howling, hoping that its companion could save itself, but its companion was doomed to be powerless. Fortunately, its howling has attracted people's attention, and people have made great efforts to save the killer whale. Fortunately, the killer whale finally returned to the sea successfully. As the overlord of the ocean, killer whales generally rarely appear in people's field of vision. Many people see killer whales in the aquarium, and it is rare to see killer whales at sea, let alone on land. But one early morning in July 2015, Eric heard a very strange sound during his daily patrol mission in the sea. After rushing over, he found a killer whale on land. Eric is a whale researcher. He was sailing in a boat that day when he suddenly heard a strange sound coming from behind the rock. After going around the back of the rock, Eric saw an orca stranded on the rubble. Eric immediately called the Marine Conservation Organization, knowing he couldn't help the huge guy alone. 
Eric told environmental groups that a killer whale was caught between sharp rocks, and the tide kept receding, and the killer whale was getting farther and farther away from the water. After the local environmental protection organization got the news, they immediately sent people to help. Whale experts in environmental organizations speculate that the stranded killer whale should have been caused by hunting. Killer whales like to hunt in groups, and seals are one of their favorite prey. Killer whales are very smart, they probably want to keep the seals on the shore, so that they can be easily obtained. While the other killer whales waited patiently for the seal to enter the trap, the young female killer whale must have been anxious and misjudged her position. As a result, after the tide receded, she found herself swimming too far from the coast. Far away until immobile. When Eric found the killer whale, it had just run aground and was still struggling, leaving many wounds on its abdomen, which stained the nearby seawater a little red. It kept calling for help and was obviously very frightened. After Eric reported the situation to the Environmental Protection Organization, the people of the Environmental Protection Organization did not dare to delay for a moment, because they knew that the longer the delay, the more dangerous the situation of the killer whale would be. People from the Environmental Protection Organization arrived at the scene quickly. They first observed whether they could help the killer whale leave the broken rock and return to the sea. After careful consideration, they had to admit that they couldn't. The place where the killer whale ran aground was a small island, and they had no way to call the equipment. If you want to artificially help the killer whale escape, they need to move the killer whale back to the sea by hand. This is obviously unrealistic, this little guy is just too big. Although this killer whale is only 9 years old, it is still young, but it also weighs several tons. Moreover, the skin of killer whales is very smooth, and it is difficult for people to find the point of application. Someone suggested that the killer whale could be pulled back into the sea by tying a rope to the tail of the killer whale, and then using the power of the boat to pull the killer whale out. But this plan was quickly rejected. The reason is also very simple, the terrain does not allow it. The place where the killer whale ran aground was a piece of broken rock, densely covered with many barnacles. Both barnacles and broken rocks are very sharp. If the killer whale is pulled out rashly, it will cause great damage to the killer whale. At this time, the killer whale has already suffered some injuries from these broken rocks, and these are just because of the killer whale's own twisting. And the damage done by pulling the killer whale out would only be greater. Fortunately, human wisdom is limitless, and soon some experts came up with a new solution. Since it is impossible to artificially help the killer whale out of trouble, let the killer whale do it by itself. You only need to help the killer whales to survive until the next high tide, and the killer whales can naturally return to the sea along the tide. However, new problems also emerged. The next high tide will be 8 hours later, and the orcas may not be able to survive that time. How can they help the orcas survive this difficult 8 hours? After consulting professionals, I learned that it is only necessary to keep the killer whale cool and moist. As for how to do it, this is a marathon rescue. Around the sea, there is water everywhere, and the ships brought cloth. Because the cloth can keep the killer whale moist for a longer period of time. When people approached the killer whale, the killer whale also sensed people's kindness, and the killer whale, which was still howling, gradually calmed down. It's just that the killer whale's body is still trembling, expressing its fear. People slowly covered the killer whale with cloth, and then with the cloth with sea water. People covered the killer whale's eyes with cloth, and then slowly stroked the killer whale. This trick was very effective. After losing sight, the killer whale calmed down slowly under the comfort of people, and its body gradually eased. The summer in July is very hot, and the evaporation rate of water is surprisingly fast. Fortunately, they were lucky, the whole morning was covered with dark clouds, the sun didn't come out, and the sea breeze kept people cool. But at noon, the dark clouds dispersed. As soon as the scorching sun came out, almost all the heat was released, and the air became hot and dry all of a sudden. 
Although the cloth covering the whale was still wet, the moisture evaporated at a speed visible to the naked eye, and the cloth was getting hotter and hotter. People can only increase the frequency of water changes, and also change the cloth in time. Fortunately, the sea water is still cool, and people are just more tired. In order to enhance efficiency, people used flexible water pipes and water pumps to make a simple water pump, which can continuously provide cool sea water for killer whales. The killer whale's mood has also completely stabilized, and its breathing has become gentle. Although the killer whale still calls from time to time, it doesn't sound so miserable anymore. The killer whale should be telling its family that it is safe, because a few killer whales can be faintly seen on the sea in the distance, and they are also constantly calling. The rescue work was going on in an orderly manner, and Eric couldn't help but imagine how bad the situation of this young female killer whale would be if he hadn't heard the cry of the killer whale. It should be very difficult to return to the sea. Going to the sea must have suffered great pain. People are glad that this is just a young killer whale, which weighs no more than three tons. If it is an adult killer whale, the weight can even reach seven tons. If it is replaced by an adult orca, people may not have a solution, because the adult orca is heavier and brings greater pressure on the lungs. In the sea, the buoyancy of the sea water will help to offset part of it, but on land, all this is borne by the killer whale itself. After eight hours, the water pump was overwhelmed and broke after working for a long time. When people were anxious, the sea level finally began to rise. After another hour, the tide finally rose high enough for the killer whale to break free from the broken rock. The sheets were removed from the orca, and in order not to scare the orca, the people retreated to the boat and sailed some distance away so the orca could swim out of its prison on its own. People prayed silently on the boat, that the killer whale still have the strength to return to the sea. The killer whale moved its body first, and after making sure that it could float, in order to avoid accidents, the killer whale waited until the sea water rose a little more before swimming back into the sea. The killer whale called again, and this time people could hear the joyful emotion from the killer whale's call. People rejoiced that the killer whale was successfully rescued, and when they were about to leave, people found that they were surrounded by killer whales. Just when people were wondering, it was discovered that the leader was the little killer whale that had just been rescued. The little killer whale kept twisting its body, and then imitated humans to swing up and down to express its gratitude to people. People are also very moved.